Hey guys, Pro1701 here, and today on another face-off, we are looking at Season 11 versus Series 11, some classic Doctor Who versus modern Doctor Who. And we'll be looking at John Pertwee's final season, which is sometimes called by some people his weakest season, versus Whitaker's first series, which is indeed the worst season series the show has ever put out. And the poll reflects it. Let's be honest, I think a lot of us knew how this one was going to go. And it went that way. With 91% of the vote in a massive landslide. How high of a percentage does it have to be for it to count as a slaughter? 91% <laughs> of the vote voting for Season 11 of Classic Who. 6% of the vote voting for Series 11 of Modern Who, and 3% saying that they can't decide and that it was a tie and they didn't want Twitter to uh, <laughs> call them mean names. Um, <laughs> I think we knew this one was going to go this way. Um, series 11 is, I think, the worst season the show has ever done. Now, to be fair, Series 11 has some neat ideas. It truly does have some neat ideas. They're not always executed well, but in concept, some neat ideas. I love the fact there are no returning villains, no classic villains. I like the fact the series is completely new villains. They're very uninspired, uninteresting villains, but I like the fact it's new villains. <clears throat> I mean, season 13 does that in, as well in Classic Who, and that's the best season the show's ever put out. So that idea can work, and I will give Chris Chibnall credit for trying that. I love the fact that the series is very episodic. It doesn't have a big arc, because I am fed up with seasonal arcs in modern Doctor Who. Fed up with them. I tend to prefer episodic television for the most part, like in the old days. That way, if I want to watch an episode of Columbo, I just watch an episode of Columbo. I want to watch an episode of Knight Rider, I just watch an episode of Knight Rider. I watch an episode of the original Star Trek, I just watch it. I don't have to worry about seasonal arcs. So, I like the fact that most of Series 11 is self-contained in its episodes, for the most part. Not completely, but for the most part. I did like that. Um, I like the fact that the historicals felt closer to pure historicals than we've gotten in a while. The historicals here kind of harken back to the Hartnell era. And I can appreciate that, especially in Demons of the Punjab, which in my opinion really is a pure historical. Demons of the Punjab is a pure historical disguised as a pseudo-historical because the aliens that are in it uh the ones that used to be the assassins that the, that the doctor thinks are behind everything it's just a red herring to throw us off the trail of the fact that the doctor really is just in a situation where history is playing out the way we know history plays out she's just caught up in historical event historical events much like the pure historicals of Hartnell's era, like the Crusade and the Aztecs and the Reign of Terror, where there's no necessarily big bad to fight. They're just, they arrive, they get caught up in events, and they have to get out of there, and events play out the way events are going to play out. That's really what Demons of the Punjab does, and we have the assassins there to trick us into thinking they're responsible when they're really not. It really is a pure historical when you think about it, and the fact that the other aliens are just there as window dressing. And I, that's really fascinating to me, actually. I do actually enjoy three episodes from Series 11, Demons of the Punjab, for reasons I just outlined. Uh, even though Yaz doesn't get the character development that she should in what's supposed to be a Yaz story. Um, her Blam is good, and I really like the Ghost Monument a lot as well. The rest of the series is abysmal, and Whitaker, Whitaker is very miscast in the role. And she gets better as she's in the role longer, but here in her first series, it just shows she doesn't connect with the character. She has those really try-hard speeches that very rarely land for me. I just don't buy her as the Doctor most of the time, especially in this series. She does improve in later series uh, in, to one degree or another. <clears throat> the Companions... Yaz doesn't get much development in Series 11. It really is a crowded TARDIS situation, just like Five had. Uh, Ryan gets a little bit of character development at the beginning, and then that kind of just goes away. Uh, Graham is really the most likable of them, to be honest. Not that I dislike Ryan or Yaz, they're fine. They just don't really have any development. At least with Graham, you have that kind of caring granddad character there. And he, 
and Bradley Walsh plays it in a very humorous way. But then we have series of uh, season 11, which is good. I mean, I don't think there's any bad stories in, se in uh, season 11. I think the Time Warriors is amazing. The best Suntaran story ever made. It's a great introduction to them and to Sarah Jane. And it's a fantastic historical episode for Pertwee. And then we have uh, Death to the Daleks, which is really good. I enjoy that one a lot. I think it's a very underrated story. Monsters of Peladon is fine. Sarah Jane gets some great character development in it that I like. Planet of the Spiders is um, <clears throat> good. Not great, but good. Has some really nice moments in it. And then I like Invasion of the Dinosaurs. <clears throat> I think it's a good story. <clears throat> and it's interesting to see uh, how Yates' story plays out in that episode. You don't really see that coming. So while it has a couple of flaws, it's a good story. So for me, uh, Series 11 just, I mean, excuse me, Season 11, Classic Who Season 11 definitely wins in my book. Pertwee is just a way better doctor than um, Whitaker is, and Sarah Jane is a way better companion. She's the best companion, in my opinion, than any of the Whitaker era companions are. So hands down. Uh, wins, wins for me. Plus, Season 11 has Robert Holmes in Series 11. Doesn't always a point in Season 11's favor. But let's see what you guys had to say. And Philip says, Season 11 is a full-on English breakfast, bacon, eggs, sausage, fried mushrooms, grilled tomatoes, beans, and fried bread, setting you up perfectly for a good day to come in the next few seasons. Uh, series 11 is a six-month-old, half-eaten morsel of junk food, decayed, moldy, nibbled at by rats, and impossible to swallow. I find that hard to swallow. <laughs> Jeremy Duncan says, Whitaker's first season may not have been to my liking, but at least it tried to give the show a bit of a break from the monotony of the return of the Dalek Cybermen and Time Lord lore. They got right back to it next season, though. But even if Series 11 was fresh, there's no way, no matter what it did, that could have helped it beat the quality of Season 11. Time Warrior, Invasion of the Dinosaurs, Planet of the Spiders are bona fide classics. Even Monsters of Peladon has a bit of lovely foreshadowing in Part 6 to the, to the third Doctor's Final Words next story. <coughs> Joshua Joshua says, I like both, but Season 11 had some amazing stories and was Pertwee's Pert final season. And of course, it was also the first to introduce the Suntorans and Sarah Jane, and I love the Spiders episode. Because I consider that one to be, to be one of the epic stories. So classic Season 11 is always highly ranked. Series 11 I liked only because uh, it was something different. The stories weren't amazing, but they were far more entertaining than the Moffat era was, in my opinion. I think we can all, all agree, though, that Planet of, Planet of the Spiders beats Arachnids in the UK. Yes, yes we can. Almost everything beats Arachnid in the UK. It's one of the worst three episodes ever made. Foggy D says, Series 11 starts well enough, loses its way a tad in the middle, and then gets lumbered with a notoriously weak final, but you have to give credit to it for trying to do something different with New Who. Season 11 is also a little clunky in places with things like that T-Rex special effects and the hastily written finale following the untimely passing of Delgado feeling underwhelming bar the last couple of scenes. <clears throat> but it's still better than Jody's eight-legged effort. <laughs> I also enjoy the Time Warrior, Death to the Daleks, and Monsters of Peladon more than Ghost Monument, Saranga, and it takes you away. So chalk this one up to yet another vote for classic for me. <clears throat> the Gurkuman says, Pertwee had a very good final season. To be honest, he was consistently good. Being between Troughton and Tom Baker has not done him any favors popularity-wise. I'll always enjoy his tenure, though. 13's first season was also consistent, but more consistently meh than good. Some good moments and episodes, though. Colin Coney, who is one of my top tier patrons, who I always make sure to thank in every video, says, not sure you need to ask how I voted, but let's just say that you arguably have the third greatest Doctor versus John Pertwee. No, wait. <laughs> Seriously, though. Three and Sarah are, are great. The Time Warrior is really good. Invasion, much more fun than its reputation. Death and Dalek Frank, everyone remembers Dalek Frank, is good, apart from the polystyrene city melted with the heat gun. Yeah, yeah. Monsters is the weak point, and Spiders is a bit ho-hum. However, it is up against Series 11, and well. 13, it's basically like going into a battle against a modern battle tank when you're armed with a feather duster and a winning smile. <laughs> I need to remember that. That is hilarious. Uh, it will just end badly and not for the tank. I need to remember that. That's hilarious. 
Uh, Jakey says, I haven't seen season 11 yet, but there's no way it can lose to series 11, LOL. You really should see season 11. It's amazing. It's got Bob Holmes in it. Bob Holmes makes the season amazing. As long as there's no giant squid involved. But he also wrote Ryboss Operation, so yeah, still an amazing season. Henry Andrews says, is this really a competition? Season 11 is definitely the best of the two. Planet of the Spiders is a fitting finale for Pertwee, in my opinion, even if it does have a few things wrong with it. Like that self-indulgent action chase sequence, which I actually enjoy that myself. Pertwee is great. Unit is great. Sarah Jane Smith, definitely the right surname this time, is phenomenal too. It's no contest, especially when you think of the Series 11 finale with the Tooth Fairy monster, Tim Who. And I had to pick at him. I was like, Tim Shaw, you have trouble with that last name, don't you? Because it was Liz's name he, he got wrong in another video. And her last name's also Shaw. And so uh, I, was, I picked at him about it. And then we started making Shaw points, uh, Shaw puns to each other back and forth throughout the thread, which was uh, a very amusing. Uh, he's like, I, I know, I'm Shaw, I'll get it right eventually. And I'm like, are you Shaw about that? And he said, I'll try my best to in Shaw, I do better in the future. And I was like, well, if you need any reassurance, just let me know. <laughs> JLB Who says, I actually don't... Ooh, that screen is so bright, it's making my eyes hurt. Uh, the screen is so bright, I gotta wear shades. JLB Who, who is also one of my patrons, says, I actually don't really know. And then he has a laughing emoji. I have grown to appreciate Series 11, which that's an odd sentence for a Doctor Who fan to say. <laughs> and I like Season 11, but it, it has its poor ones too. Planet of the Spiders was a tad boring for me. Love the Time Warrior. Love Kerblam. Okay, it's a tie. It's a what? <laughs> Kerblam is good though. And that was actually my comment. What? <laughs> he said, I've had a very sleep-deprived week. I don't know anything anymore. But yet, Jody Pertwee is great. <laughs> and my response to that was, go to bed. <laughs> he said, if I wake up claiming Orphan 55 is peak Doctor Who, that's when you know you should get the emergency service involved. I've got a comment on that because I didn't. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> uh... Trust me, if I hear anyone claiming that Orphan 55 is peak Doctor Who, we will be scheduling an intervention. <laughs> Problem being says, I honestly struggle with people defending the Chibnall Whitaker perversion of Doctor Who. I really do. There really is no account for taste, I suppose. This really is chalk and cheese. Season 11 is top tier Doctor Who. The other is simply not Doctor Who. I like Problem Being. He's very blunt about his opinion. And he, he never says it in a way that I find offensive to anyone else. He's just blunt with his opinion. One of my patrons, Stephen, is the same way. And I can admire blunt honesty, especially when it's not actually being mean to anyone. It's just blunt honesty. I can respect that. Uh, Kenneth Raymond Moore says, are they really canning people on Twitter now? <laughs> they probably are. I meant to say calling people names, and I said canning people names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul Bailey said, oh, I have to say season 11 wins for me. Series 11, although is a pile of rubbish, season 11 is better. The third Doctor and Sarah Jane are brilliant. Got uh, good chemistry between them, specifically in Monster of Peladon. Death to the Dallas gets so much hate. I really don't get why, as I love uh, taking the Daleks away is a good idea. I actually love the uh, kind of machine gun weapons they get in it. Simon Mencher, who is a subscriber who has actually sent several things to the P.O. Box, which I always appreciate, Simon. He says, yet another walkover. No comparison in stories, companions, monsters, and certainly not doctors. Uh, GW Fan 91 says, gee. <laughs> While uh, Mohabed Gailan says, really proud. Seriously? Fair enough. <laughs> So the comments are in agreement with the poll. Classic Who just slaughtering modern Who here with season 11 and Pertwee just trouncing Whitaker in her first series. Rightfully so. Again, the Whitaker, series 11 has a couple things interesting it does, which I talked about at the beginning, but it, it is a pretty bad, pitiful excuse for Doctor Who compared to, series, to season 11, which I think is really good Doctor Who. I tend to love the Pertwee era and Pertwee's Doctor. 
and it's got Sarah Jane in it. And I, I actually like the dynamic between three and Sarah Jane a lot. So Classic Who winning with 91% of the vote, Modern Who getting 6% and 3% calling it a tie. If you didn't get to vote in this poll, I would like you to comment down below and tell me which one you prefer between those two. Other things to do, don't forget to click the like button and the subscribe button and the bell for notifications so you never miss out on another video. I am trying to reach a thousand subscribers in 2023, the anniversary year. That is my goal. And we're well on our way to that. We are well on our way to that. And I appreciate each and every one of you for that. I also have a Patreon if you would like to support me that, uh, on that. That does help me keep the bills paid. There's a link to that down in the description below. My entry level tier is only $2 a month. I will be doing uh, Blake 7 reviews soon. The edited versions of that will come out on the channel. I still haven't figured out the PMP, the picture in picture. I'm sorry. Uh, but they will be coming with reactions and reviews at the end of that. The unedited full length versions of those will be on the Patreon. The first three or four episodes will be available to every tier level, including the introductory $2 tier level. After that, I think it will they will all be available at the $5 tier level and up if you want to see my full unedited reaction to episodes of Blake 7. Uh, I also have a P.O. box if there's anything you would like to send me to look at and review. That DVD collection of Blake 7 was actually sent by one of my fly, uh, one of my one of my subscribers, the Fly Attractor, my words are running together, uh, which I really appreciate. And I also have a link to my Amazon wish list down there as well. Most importantly though, Thank you for watching.